I think this Jeep needs a wash. TSN's Motoring 96 is brought to you by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life, and Midas, the way it should be. Just one for the movie tonight? Yes, me. All right. Can I have your ticket, please? Enjoy the show. Is it clear now? Can I come out? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Quickly. <laughs> Does this bring back memories of going, sneaking into the drive-in in the good old days? Well, of course, not memories for yours truly, but I hear that things like this were done in the good old days. All right, why are we here at a drive-in, you're asking? Well, General Motors, and you've heard of General Motors, they apparently make cars, they put on this big drive-in promotion to promote Saturn. Well, obviously I don't have any General Motor advertising dollars in my back pocket, so what are we doing here? Well, to be honest with you, my curiosity got the best of me. I came here to find out what General Motors is up to, why they're up to it, and how about all these people driving Saturns? There's literally hundreds in here. There's another several hundred lined up outside. Now, I thought people were cynics today, but they're taking part in a manufacturer's promotion night. Why? Well, we're here to find out. That's Saturn number one. Local residents were used to seeing a Saturday night lineup outside the 400 drive-in in Woodbridge, Ontario, but they'd never seen anything like this. Saturn vehicles, as far as the eye could see, were arriving for a night at the movies with General Motors picking up the tap. A year ago, Saturn did their homecoming in Spring Hill, and we had a lot of Canadians went. About two to three hundred people drove from Canada down to Spring Hill, Tennessee. But we felt that really there was something there that we could grab and we could do a better job with and build a better relationship with our customers if we did it in Canada. So here we are. We're doing it tonight. We're doing 30 locations across Canada, all taking place at the same time, all with the same show, uh, Apollo 13. You look, you're going to see 1,200 people here, 1,200 Saturn, so it's a great opportunity. Uh, excuse me, there's a problem here. Isn't this for Saturns only? What are you doing here, a minivan? I mean, don't you have nerve? Cars at home, sorry. <laughs> you have a Saturn though at home? Yes, we do. Brand new, it's uh, it's, it's two months old. What, two months old. We, we didn't want to get popcorn stains all over it, so we... Uh, we decided to bring the truck instead. Well, you know, we've, we've invited every owner across the country. And uh, usually when you do a direct mail response, you look and say, gosh, if we're going to get 5%, we're really going to do well. I think our response is probably going to be 25 to 30% uh, across the country. Uh, we're amazed here in the Toronto area because uh, literally we're overflowing with people. Welcome to Saturn. Just wanted to see the movie tonight? It's a car promotion, but tell me which one brought you out here. Free uh, fifteen dollars worth of munchies. <laughs> You're staying for the movie? Yes. What do you think of all this? I mean, from a car manufacturer doing this, uh, what's the reasoning? I mean, what you, what's your feeling on it? I mean, I, I think it's pretty cool. Actually, uh, it's one of the reasons why we bought a Saturn. They did uh, did all the extras, and uh, you know, I like it. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Terrific. I'm great. Thank you. Do you have a good time tonight? Okay. Just follow this non-Saturn product around. <laughs> Head towards the ladder, stay to the left, you don't want to go underneath, it's bad luck. Okay. Okay? And if you can answer me the trivia question of how you're going to find your car, if you leave it again... Refresh! Refresh. <laughs> Smart people! All right! You have a good night. It is a different kind of company, and we've kind of gone back to the basics. Treat people with respect and, and, uh, and, and offer good service, and I think Saturn's success is, is because of that. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we are surpassing the imports, I'd like to think. I'm sure you've owned a few cars in your life, and, and there's a bit of a cynic in all of us, uh, but do you really believe you're enjoying yourself? Well, not so far. There's been uh, a lot of traffic up there. It's a terrible spot up there in Seventh Highway. So far, I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> I have Hi. a problem. Uh-oh. What's your problem? My biggest problem is 
He opened the window and the damn ticket flew out the what? window. Do you remember the number? Just, just got a name. Design problem. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I know you brought the whole family out here tonight. Definitely, yes. Yeah, the whole family. How long have you owned a Saturn, and what do you think of all this? I mean, you've probably owned a few cars. I mean, manufacturers aren't usually doing these kind of things. I have. I don't own it. It's the you wife's. You don't own a Saturn. It's the wife's. Oh, okay. See. Okay. I, I, well, I, I, I don't like the cars. are too small. Too narrow. They're not wide enough. The seats are too narrow. I don't like the. They changed the seatbelts this year. Good thing because I hate those automatic seatbelts. That's right. And uh, I don't know. If they put a if they put a, a Honda motor in it, it'd be great. <laughs> great car, you know. Apollo 13 is showing here. You're in the business of manufacturing cars, not making movies. Whose decision was that? That was uh, well, you know, that was a joint decision. But really, Apollo 13 is about teamwork. Like those, okay, take away the life and death stuff. I mean, but teamwork is what Saturn's all about. And uh, we work as a team, and we respect uh, other people, and we work hard to get the job accomplished. And that's what, when you see the movie, that's what it's all about. Did you ever think? That there'd be this much excitement and hoopla over an economy car that manufacturers would be bringing you out to a movie? Well, no, but I came to see Apollo 13, actually. <laughs> That's why I'm here, <laughs> at the free popcorn. <laughs> and I'm not sure I'll be able to find my car back out in that parking lot. <laughs> uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. We have a main bus be undervolt. We've got a lot of thrust around here in Houston. Now. just went offline. In this edition of Test Drive, we look at the revised version of Mazda's MPV minivan. Now, not only have they redone the exterior styling and revamped the interior, they've also added this, a fourth door. One of the problems of adding a fourth door to a minivan is that in doing so, you risk compromising the structural integrity of the body. Well, Mazda have done a good job incorporating a perimeter subframe into the monocoque cabin. Even the rigors of the cobblestone roads in and around Quebec City did not bother the body. Indeed, I noted little in the way of twist or flex. For better overall safety, the engineers have increased the length of the body by a little over seven and a half inches. This allows for larger crumple zones, and now all doors, including the fourth door, now feature side impact beams that meet the requirements of passenger cars. Power for the MPV is supplied by a modified version of the 3.0-litre single-overhead cam 18-valve V6 found in last year's model. The modifications all come in the form of fuel management. The old vane-type airflow sensor has been replaced with a hot-wire system. This and the revised intake runners put more power in the usable rev range. With 155 horsepower and 169 pounds-feet of torque available, Throttle response is lively even if you use the seating capacity to the max. Thumbs up for the fact that most of the power shows up for work between 1800 and 2800 RPM. When I originally tested the MPV, I commented on how complicated Mazda's hold feature was that they used to control the gears. Well, on this edition, they've dropped that system in favor of a straight on-off button for the overdrive. This not only makes the thing a whole lot easier to understand, it also makes it much more user-friendly. The MPV is offered in both rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive formats. The latter is a must for anyone who lives in a snowbelt region. The degree of traction it offers has to be experienced to be believed. I certainly appreciated the system in the rain we encountered because in two-wheel drive, the MPV can become a little tail-happy. The switch between two and four wheel drive is as simple as a flick of a switch. There is also a diff lock for the center differential. When engaged, the MPV is all but impossible to get stuck. The suspension is comprised of coil springs and struts up front with a five link live axle in back and roll bars at both ends. For 96, Mazda have retuned the whole lot to reduce the amount of body roll during cornering. The result is a more comfortable and confident ride because the van no longer feels like it's going to fall over if you drive it with a degree of enthusiasm. Again, the cobblestone roads were handled with suitable aplomb. Mazda have also tightened up the feel of the speed-sensitive power steering. 
The result is that you now have to put in fewer corrections to maintain a straight line on the highway. Stopping power is supplied by a four-wheel disc brake system that features ventilated discs at both ends as well as anti-lock. The advantage of having ventilated discs all round is that you are much less likely to encounter fade when you use the MPV to capacity. The stopping distance is averaged 124 feet from 80 kilometers an hour. The weather accounting for the longer than usual distances. One of the drawbacks of the old MPV was the fact that you couldn't remove the rear seat unless of course you happen to have a toolkit handy. Well, on this vehicle, release a few catches, the seat lifts out. The beauty is, it's really not that heavy. The drawback, however, they still haven't flattened out the floor pan. There's still quite a drop off from where the rear seat sits down to where the center seats rest. With the back seat in situ, you have 11.1 .1 cubic feet of cargo space. Fold it down and tumble it forward and the volume increases to 37.5 cubic feet. On the subject of space, there is an abundance of head and reasonable leg room in all seating positions. The MPV is much more user friendly than previous van. The instrumentation is larger and consequently easier to read and the layout of the controls has been rationalized making them easier to locate and operate. The one fly in the ointment is still the fact that the radio is impossible to use without looking at it, partially because the buttons are on the fiddly side and partially because it sits a long way down the center console. Elsewhere you'll find an oversized sunroof plus dash mounted and rear controls for the dual AC and heater. On the safety front the MPV comes with standard ABS and dual airbags, three point seat belts and headrests in all outboard positions and childproof door locks on both back doors. Well, that's it for this rather damp edition of Test Drive. You know, Mazda have done a very good job in redesigning the MPV. The fourth door and the fact that you can now remove the rear seat with relative ease are sure to pay dividends. If there is a downside, it remains in the fact that the floor plan is still not flat. This means that vehicle remains firmly focused as a people hauler as opposed to a truly multi-purpose vehicle. Well, this week I'm outside of the shop. We're, we're actually up at the uh, Downsview Air Force Base, or CFB Toronto, for the 96 GM uh, product preview to their fleet customers. Of course, one of the things I was most interested in, of course, is the trucks. And uh, the big news in the 96 trucks, certainly in the full-size trucks, is the addition of this third door on the passenger side. And uh, I talked to John Healy at General Motors, and he tells me that this truck actually fared better in the side impact crash testing than uh, their previous trucks did, in spite of this cavernous opening in on the side of the truck when both those doors are open. But the big news, of course, as far as guys like uh, myself are concerned, is in the engine bay. So we want to have a look at what they've done up there. Some of the key changes under the hood include the fact that they've moved the ECM or uh, computer that, that runs the engine uh, fuel management system out under the hood. It used to be inside the truck. Much easier to get at for testing and uh, they tell me it's well enough sealed that uh, weather won't be a problem out there. Now the big change under the hood is the fuel management system used on the 96 engines. Uh, the GM pickup trucks from 87 to 95 previously used what we call TBI or throttle body injection made for a very simple engine, but in order to take the engine to new levels of performance and, and fuel economy, they had to go with a more sophisticated system. Uh, these new Vortex series of engines have uh, a system we refer to as central port injection. A little bit more uh, sophisticated, but it's capable of tremendous fuel economy and uh, dramatic increase in horsepower. For example, these 96 engines in the small block V8s like the 5 liter and 5.7 liter are up almost 50 horsepower in one model year. So it gives you an idea of what a dramatic uh, performance gain. And they were no slouches before, as a matter of fact. Uh, the Donaldson filter rate in here is uh, tremendously increased in size over last year. And uh, over here, it seems to be, as far as I can see, the first application of this little uh, filter minder right here. This is a little unit that uh, flags uh, a, fil a filter problem. If you have a restricted or plugged air filter, this thing will actually show you. There's a little flag in here that normally shows green. If the filter is offering a restriction to the engine enough to hurt performance or fuel economy, the flag will uh, come down and show orange in that little window, and you'll know that it's time to change the filter. 
Uh, over here we have this new orange colored coolant which now uh, has a service life of five years or 160,000 kilometers which is uh, quite remarkable indeed. And uh, also this engine has platinum tip spark plugs and they're also uh, uh, good for 160,000 kilometer durability. So between uh, those spark plugs and that coolant, uh, it's going to mean that guys like me are going to have to get uh, real good at doing something else maybe like body work because uh, engine maintenance is going to be way down. And that's one of the things apparently that uh, the GM's really appealing to these fleet buyers at this show today, the fact that these vehicles will require dramatically less maintenance in some areas. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 96. Hi, my name is Jan. I'm with Team Suzuki and here's our brand new X90. This is the new 1996 Honda Del Sol. Bonjour, voici un nouveau modèle Jetta GLX, celui de l'année 1996. This is the 1996 Hyundai Sonata. This is home to Canada's only automotive business program. For 10 years, the students at Georgian College in Barrie, Ontario, have been running one of the country's most talked about car shows. Well, this is the largest show ever. I've got to say, this is a, a very, very tight show. They've done very well with respect to uh, working with the manufacturers, making sure the cars are displayed well. We've got first-year students that are product ambassadors, second-year students are captains and co-captains, and the third-year students are the chairs of the show. They actually produce the whole show. So you're looking at a major event here. It's outdoors. We take advantage of the elements. About 20,000 people coming here, and the students are the product ambassadors, and we provide what we call a sales-free zone for the community. This allows people to come onto the site and actually see the cars, all the vehicles that are available without any pressure of sales. The students are going to be able to tell them everything about the car and where they can find the car without any pressure of trying to close a sale or make sure somebody walks out of here with the vehicle. Customers or probable customers test the, the students on their product knowledge and their knowledge is pretty well up to snuff because of the training they've received from the manufacturer. Well, there are a couple of reasons we like to come to Georgian College. One, it's an extremely good show from the point of view that it's the first show of the season and it's nice to get the cars out here. But the other reason and the main reason is that it's great that we're able to support the Canadian Automotive Institute. Uh, it gives the, the students a tremendous opportunity to have hands-on experience in running a car show. And it gives, they're mostly first-year students that are doing it, and it's a real thrill for them to get in and do a show just in the first month they're at college. It really makes them feel they're part of the car business and of course that's what uh, the Georgian College Institute course is, is all about, is training young people so that they will be effective managers in the future. Okay, now do you guys have kids or anything? No, not yet. Okay. Just the two of us. Um, so. Okay. So there's lots of safety features on this vehicle. There's I think it's pack. great that they've given the opportunity for the students to put on the show. There's 11 girls in first year and there's 150 in the class, so that was actually really scary for me the first week, but the guys have been great and I've learned a lot from them and they learn a lot from us girls too, I think. It gives you more room inside. Oh yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a nice vehicle. Well, being the 10th anniversary, I, I can go back to 10 years. I've been here since the inception and I've seen a lot of growth. I've seen the show grow larger. I've seen it get better, uh, better uh, presentation, um, better uh, probably promotion and uh, support from the industry. You're looking at the aftermarket here, there are dealers here, manufacturers. It's such a well-rounded show now. It's really evolved over years to a point now where we think we are a major show on the site tour. Since our last long-term update, we've developed a small problem with the Tacoma. Both rear shackle bushings have developed this very annoying squeak. Now it's not a major problem, they just need tightening and lubricating. That will be done when we take the truck in for a 6,000 kilometer service. On the next update, we'll keep you apprised of how we were treated at the dealership and the cost per kilometer that we're running at right now. Our minus tip of the week concerns purchasing a light duty truck. There's a myriad of different combinations available, starting out with the body styles. Regular cab, extended cab, shorter long box. You start mixing in all the mechanical choices. Most of the manufacturers offer at least one six cylinder engine, two or three V8s in most cases. One manufacturer has a gas V10, 
at least one or more diesels available from all the manufacturers. You've got half, three quarter and one ton versions of just about every full size truck. You mix in two or four wheel drive transmission choices like a five speed manual or a four speed overdrive automatic and it can become a mind boggling combination of, of available options. Make sure that if you're not totally sure of what you need to do your job that you consult somebody who does because you don't want to buy any more or less truck than you actually need to do your job. That's your Midas tip of the week. Does the market have a distorted perception of pickup trucks? I'll be right back on Kenzie's Corner. Kenzie's Corner with Jim Kenzie. It's the 1990s, a time of worldwide concern for our environment, for depleting natural resources, yada, da, da, da. So what are the most popular vehicles these days? Trucks, full-size pickup trucks. Now, will someone please explain this to me? You got a 5,000 pound vehicle here. It has two seats. Now this one happens to have a place to put a briefcase in out of the rain, but most of them don't. They ride like, well, like trucks. They don't meet passenger car safety or fuel economy standards. They have huge V8 engines that get eight miles per gallon. And people are driving these to the office. Now what kind of special craziness is this? Now my sister lives in Calgary. And she visited me here in Toronto a few months ago and said, boy, people still buy cars around here. Well, sis, we're getting as crazy in central Canada as you guys out west already are. Now, the occasional pickup truck buyer lives on a ranch and has to haul a hay bale or two around. I can understand that. Hay bales fit perfectly well in my 74 Hornet hatchback. But these folks are using these things for what the marketing guys euphemistically refer to as personal use. It means they're driving them to work, to the movies, to the grocery store. I just don't get it. Of course, it's all an image thing. Now, people don't buy Porsches because they can drive 150 miles an hour. They buy them because they want their friends to think they could go 150 miles an hour if they just had the opportunity. It's the same with pickup trucks. People who drive these things want their friends to think that they, well, what do they want them to think? That they spend their entire lives hauling hay bales around? Boy, that's real macho stuff, pretty glamorous sounding to me. Sorry, I just don't get it. Now, everybody thinks the pickup truck craze is gonna go on forever. Well, all we need is a good old fashioned fuel crisis. If we're paying a buck 50 a liter instead of 50 cents for gasoline, pickup trucks like this will disappear overnight. Frankly, it can't happen soon enough for me. I'm Jim Kenzie. Uh, excuse oh. me, Jim, but what do you have to say about pickup trucks? Oh, uh, oh nothing, Bill, nothing. Uh, we'll catch you all later. Now, I don't know much about movie projectors, but they tell me that in an indoor regular theater, these lamp boxes, as they're known, have to project about 100 feet. But in a multiplex drive-in like this one, they have to project sometimes over 800 feet. That's some kind of light bulb. Anyway, Apollo 13 is still continuing out there with all these Saturn owners, but we've got to go. And anyway, I've seen the movie. We'll be back next week, though, as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. Oh, yeah, they told me to turn the light off before I go. TSN's Motoring 96 has been brought to you by Quaker State the intelligent oil for longer engine life, and Midas, the way it should be.